Well, greetings, great bodhisattvas. Um, I haven't said that in a while. It's kind of nice. And uh, happy Vesak to uh, those of us who are living in the future. And happy Vesak Eve for the rest of us here on the East Coast of the United States. Um, a little backstory here. Um, there's this uh, epidemic going on. They're, they're calling it a pandemic, in fact. And there are 250,000-ish people across the globe who have died and 60,000 some odd in the US. And as of Saturday, I didn't know anyone, but now I do. Uh, my ex-brother-in-law died this past Saturday, and his wife, widow, I suppose now, tested positive on Monday. And um, that moved things from sort of random statistics to reality real quickly. Um, and for a couple of days here, I'm sure it's more than a couple, there have been these protesters going out and, um, you know, protesting without masks on, not observing the six foot distance between each other and uh, protesting the tyranny of having to wear masks and stay six feet apart. And uh, I've never really been that fond of that whole behavior. I found it to be somewhat um, on the selfish side, but that's, that's me, that's my opinion. But after I heard about my brother-in-law on Saturday, uh, it took on a whole new twist to it. Uh, I actually became viscerally angry about that sort of behavior. Um, the fact that these people could uh, disregard the health of others or the potential health of others, uh, I thought was uh, self-centered at best. And Again, we're dealing all with my opinions here, but to be honest, one of the things that Zen practice has given me and I think gives us all in general is the uh, ability to become more introspective and become more aware of uh, the feelings as they arise and fall away. And the feeling that arose was definitely one of anger. Uh, I was not pleased that there were people putting other people like my brother-in-law uh, at jeopardy. And the fact is that who knows, he and his wife may have put others in jeopardy too without knowing it. So, it's one of those uh, more obvious examples of our all being interconnected. We start out by, by chanting the Bodhisattva vows here. Um, the first of which is that beings are numberless. We vow to help them all. And there's a few things in that a uh, very short declarative sentence. Um, just defining the three words individually is no real big deal. Help is pretty easy. You're giving assistance. Um, them is pretty much the universe minus me. And uh, all, likewise, is the universe, and that includes me. 
so the issue becomes when we start dividing lines between uh, us and them and trying to split up universe into people whose opinions we like and people whose behavior we like and people whose behavior and opinions we don't like and what happens to us, what happens in here when we run into those people. The third patriarch of Zen, uh, Saint San, uh, his seminal work called the Jin Jin Ming, or um, faith, I, I don't even remember what the translation is, faith, mind, something. But it starts with, uh, the great way is easy for those who have no preferences. And when we watch the anger arise, uh, as I did this past week, it was pretty obvious that I was separating me from others, having preferences between my opinion, which I of course think is right, and other people's opinion, who I of course think are wrong. But where do we draw the line? The bodhisattva vows are very aspirational. Sentient beings are numberless. We vow to help them all. That's a pretty big order that's being made of us. And yet we do it anyway. We have our practice that helps us uh, do that. It helps us um, stay within the boundaries, if there are such things, of our practice between what's worldly and what's the Buddha way. And our practice hopefully informs us what that Buddha way is. And being aspirational, sometimes we're going to fall short. Sometimes we're going to get angry. And likewise, sometimes we're going to be happy and joyous and dance tra-la down the lanes filled with flowers. But like I said, since Saturday, I was not that happy, jolly guy. We don't need to accept everything that everybody does as valid or correct. So Sun would always talk about correct situation, relationship, and function. The Buddha himself would have to tell people that there are 62 erroneous views. Um, my take on the Shorangama Sutra, and I may be alone in this, but I will uh, expound upon that anyway. Uh, for me, it could also be subtitled the Buddha's uh, smacks down Ananda Sutra. Uh, there are a few places in it where I could swear that the underlying vibe is, haven't you been paying attention, Ananda? You've been here all along, and you're just not getting it. What's up with that? Um, of course, that's my translation of Pali or whatever language it, it may have been, uh, and I translate somewhat loosely, I think would be obvious. But we have to discern. We can discern what's correct and incorrect, what's wholesome and unwholesome, and what is skillful and will be benefit and help all beings, and what will not do any of those. So, before thinking and before expressing the whole I'm right, you're wrong dualism, 
we go to that place that our practice enables us that we in the five mountain order refer to as before thought where we just naturally do the correct action and in so doing we're also acting with our true natures we're doing what the buddha way would have us do so I'd like to part here with um, some words from Wan Hyo, who is one of my favorite uh, Korean Buddhist uh, figures from many, many years ago. And this is from his commentary on the doctrinal essentials of the Sutra of Immeasurable Life. Always be kind towards all sentient beings and do not denigrate their practices. If you denigrate the practices of others, in the end, you will not be reborn in paradise. Always have pity on sentient beings, ridding yourself of all malevolent sentiments. Rouse your intention to protect the Dharma and be indifferent regarding your own life. Do not denigrate any teaching. Make you resolve in the state of patient forbearance. Purify your mind deeply such that it is unstained by aims of profit. Give rise to the complete cognition of particular things, being mindful every day without putting it aside and being unaware. Treat all sentient beings with deep respect. Removing conceit, speak with humility. Don't get addicted to worldly chit-chat. Stick close to the attitude of enlightenment, profoundly producing various causes of wholesome roots. Avoid the hustle-bustle of the world and distractions. Properly contemplate on the Buddha, making the sense faculties clear. And that's really aspirational these days. But just like the Bodhisattva vows to help all beings, the fact that we don't even understand what all beings is doesn't stop us from doing it. We live according to the Buddha way, the great way, as best we can, and persevere in doing so at all times.